In the world of miniature painting, there's one color so terrifying that it will even send seasoned hobbyists running for the hills. So today, let's take a look at yellow. Today, I'm not only going to be tackling yellow, but also starting a little bit of a longer term project. You see, what I'm painting is the Primaris Lieutenant from issue one of Imperium Magazine. And since we're doing yellow, I decided to paint him up as an Imperial Fist. Over the course of Imperium Magazine, I'm going to be getting a lot of Space Marines, and I'm totally open to suggestions for color schemes that you'd like to see. If you've got a Space Marine scheme you particularly want to see, let me know down in the comments below. I've already started building a list, and uh, a few people have suggested Black Templars or Black to me before, uh, but I do actually already have a video on painting a battle-worn Black, and there will be a link to that in the description as well. I'm actually going to begin the discussion of my process here before any paint even touches the model. And that's because these Imperium Magazine models are push fit, or easy to build as they're called. Well, there's some truth and a lie to that. Let's take a look. The defining factor of these easy to build kits are these long pegs that stick out of various joints and in the middle of torsos and things. And the idea is that you line up the peg on one side with the socket on the other, push them together, and they'll hold up well enough to play with. But these are meant for people who don't have any hobby experience and maybe don't even have the right tools to put the models together in the first place. If you're watching this channel, you are a big boy and or girl, so we're going to assume that you have the right stuff to do it. Let's take a look. The very first thing I do after cutting the bits off the sprue, even before I take off the mold lines, is I either trim down or completely remove those pegs. It's going to make life a lot easier as we put the model together, and you're not going to have nearly as many unsightly gaps. Now, once everything's put together, I do go back in and take off the mold lines as per usual. To prime this, I'm using a product that's new to me, but comes very highly recommended from Marco Frizzoni, and that is Molotov's One for All Black. I put it through the airbrush, and I do notice a little bit of spraying irregularity, but that might just be my own unfamiliarity with the product. At any rate, even that smooths out pretty well by the end, and I'm left with a satin, almost glossy black finish. Now let's get into talking about tackling yellow itself. One of the big problems that comes with painting in yellow is that it is an extremely transparent paint in acrylic form. There are highly saturated, highly pigmented versions of yellow out there, largely in oil paints and largely made with cadmium, so not ideal for us brush lickers. I want to show you on an example model here what happens when you spray yellow directly over a black primer. Uh, here I'm using uh, Pro Acryl's Golden Yellow, which I really like, but I'm going to be using it incorrectly so it's going to look weird, and I'm going to explain why. As I spray this on, it's pretty clearly turning kind of a sickly weird green color, and that's because of the black base coat. Now, Philip, you might say, of course, you're spraying a light color over a black base coat. Of course, it's going to look like garbage. Well, even over white, Yellow can look kind of weird sometimes, but in the case specifically of black, uh, it has to do with how black acrylic paints are made. Uh, thanks to Vince Venturella, I know that most black paints that we actually work with aren't black. Uh, they're made from very dark blues or dark greens. So when you spray a very translucent yellow over a very dark blue, you get a really weird green. Yellow's transparency means underpainting becomes very, very important. Now, what I'm going to show here is not a technique I've pioneered by any means. In fact, you're unlikely to see much, if any, of that on this channel. My goal here is to kind of walk through what it looks like for someone who's eh, an above average painter going through some of the things that some of the pros put out there. So for yellow, we want to start with warm colors. So I need to go over my black primer. In fact, if I had an appropriate primer color, I would have just used that instead, but I don't. So we're going to grab some Pro Acryl Burnt Red. It's a little bit of a deeper, kind of brownish almost tone, and I really like it. I tend to use it as undercoats for a lot of my red in general. Give it a nice spray over the model. 
and let that dry with a little bit of help from the hair dryer, and then I go back over it with Pro Acryl's Transparent White. I, I wanted to try the transparent lines in a few different places on this project, and that's because uh, if you saw my OSL video, you'll know that I was pretty pleased with the way that they dry matte. One of the other problems you can run into with white ink on a Zenithal in particular is that if you put a very wet paint over the top of that, like a Citadel Contrast or an Army Painter Speed Paint or Scale 75 Instant Color or other acrylic inks, it can reactivate the pigment and actually pull it back up, undoing a lot of the work you just did. Uh, Monument Hobbies advertises these transparent paints as paints, just thinned down differently and I guess with a slightly different medium. At any rate, I try to use the transparent white here and it does the job admirably. It's, uh, it's a little bit different to control than ink, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does the job. And what we end up with, with this transparent-ish white over the dark red, is a sort of pinkish color which should give some warmth to the yellow when we come back over the top of it and keep us from getting that weird green color. Now it's time to actually paint some yellow. And to do that, I am going to use Pro Acryl Transparent Yellow. Now, like I said, most yellow paint is pretty translucent in the first place, and we've gone pretty heavy on the underpainting, so going completely transparent or translucent shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the Pro Acryl Transparent line is about as highly pigmented as their normal paints, so I'm hoping we'll get a nice even coat here of a nice bright yellow. I put some drops of this into the airbrush uh, straight. I don't think I diluted this at all. Maybe a tiny little bit of airbrush thinner, but I don't think so. At any rate, um, as you can see, it succeeds at producing a bright yellow. Uh, at one point I was afraid I was going to need to wear sunglasses in order to keep painting this guy and I was a little bit concerned for the project because of just how bright this is. But uh, I kept going because I realized I was probably going to darken things down later. If you've watched any of my painting videos before you probably know that there's a step coming up that's going to tone things down a little bit. Now it was time to go ahead and block in the red. Um, of course, Imperial Fists are Codex compliant, so I don't actually remember what color exactly red shoulder markings and chest eagles denote, but I just thought it looked good in a warm palette and would help make that yellow look a little bit warmer in general, so I went with red. Uh, specifically, I grabbed some Citadel Contrast Blood Angels red. I considered the Pro Acryl Transparent Red, but it's a little bit closer to a crimson, a little bit cooler of a red, and I wanted to keep things really warm. So I basically just dolloped it on all the places I wanted it. I put it on the chest eagle, around the shoulder pads, and uh, then let that sit for a little bit. After it dried, I went back over it with Monument Hobby's Bold Pyrrol Red. Bold Pyrrol Red is an amazing pop color. A lot of reds I find can look a little desaturated or just a little not vibrant enough in a lot of situations. I have never run into that problem with Bold Pyrrol Red and paired with the already bright vibrance of the Blood Angels Red, it comes off looking really good as a companion piece to this really bright yellow and already I'm less concerned about how blindingly bright that yellow is. After that, I go through and do some of the other trim and details and that sort of thing. I didn't want to go too heavy on the golden metallics on this guy for obvious reasons. Uh, gold is basically just a metallic with some yellow in it, and there's already plenty of yellow here. So for the iron halo, I went with an iron type color, in this case a Vallejo Metal Color Gunmetal and also did that on the little centerpiece on the backpack, a couple little bits and bobs here and there, the belt buckle. Uh, I did use some Vallejo Metal Color Gold for the hilt of the sword, and I used some Pro Acryl Rich Gold for some of the other accents. The Rich Gold is a very warm gold, and again, I was concerned that my yellow had come out 
too bright and, and a little bit on the cold side. I think I might have overdone it on the white Zenithal to begin with, so anything I can do to really warm this model back up, I'm gonna do. Things like the robes, I painted in Pro Acryl Ivory with some bright ivory highlights. Uh, same for the shield, I painted that with the airbrush just because it was already separate and it was a lot faster to do it that way. I then went around the edges of the shield with coal black. And the reason being is if this guy does ever see the table as part of my army, he's going to be part of my Black Templar's army. For the head stripe, I went over the yellow with some bright ivory again, pretty easy, and then went over that with bold pyrrole red. Uh, I tried using masking tape to keep the lines straight, but at the end of the day, it was just as easy to kind of cheat with a piece of paper to a certain degree to try to keep the lines straight, knowing that I was probably going to chip them up afterwards anyway. Speaking of, once I was done, I went around some of the armor edges, uh, first with a little bit of Vallejo Ice Yellow, and then with a little bit of Pro Acryl Bright Ivory to put some scratches and dents and that sort of thing. And I did the same on the red stripe on the helmet, one, to make it look a little bit weathered, and two, to hide some of my crimes. After all that, I went through and highlighted some of the metal, particularly the silver metal and the black edges of the shield with a paint that I've really started to enjoy, and that is Ammo by MIG's Dio Light Silver. Now, the Ammo by MIG Dio line is a paint specifically made for dry brushing. And what's interesting about it, it seems to have a more gel-like medium, and when you wipe most of it off on your paper towel or whatever you use for dry brushing, it doesn't result in the same kind of chalkiness that you can get if you're using a traditional acrylic paint. It makes for a really great highlight to things like the gunmetal, plus a little wear and tear chipping on the black edges of the shield and on his gun. Now, I said earlier that I knew I had a step coming that was going to dull down some of the brilliance of that yellow, and if you've watched any of my painting videos, you probably already knew what was coming, an oil wash. Now, I am using something a little bit different this time. This is Abtalon 502's Sepia. I have used a little bit of Abtalon 502 before, but this is the first time using the Sepia. But I thought it would be really good for the yellow for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of a warmish brown color, so it's going to continue that vibe of keeping my yellow warm. Uh, and two, it should be a pretty nice natural color for panel lining on this guy. As usual, I don't have a specific ratio that I like to say to mix your oil wash to. I do it by feel. Uh, put some mineral spirits in along with a little dollop of the oil paint. And I guess I should uh, really push that it needs to be mineral spirits or white spirits, depending on where you live, because I have unfortunately seen some posts on social media recently of people being confused when they tried to put acrylic paint thinner or water into their oil paint and were surprised by it didn't work why it didn't work so mineral spirits that's it uh, i like to use these little metal mixing pans and then i just kind of sweep it up onto the side to make sure that i've got the transparency and the flow that i think will be good for it once i get it where i want i lay it on pretty much all over the place knowing that i'm going to be cleaning most of it back up one thing about Abtalon 502 uh, and the way that it's marketed is they say that it dries significantly faster than a lot of other oil paints. And I found in this project that that is true. Uh, being cognizant of that fact, I didn't let it sit as long initially, only maybe 15 minutes as opposed to the 30 minutes I normally do for an oil wash done with, say, Windsor & Newton Winton paints. And then I went back in with some makeup sponges and cleaned it back up. And after a pass, if there was still some I wanted to take off, I could still dip a, a fresh sponge into a little bit of mineral spirits and wipe a little bit more off. Now it's really starting to come together. I'm starting to be pretty happy and way less concerned about how bright that yellow is. Plus, the uh, brown oil wash has helped hide a couple of places where I think I missed the, the red over the black in the initial stage. So again, hiding your crimes with clever techniques. Then it was time to let the oils dry a fair bit. 
Uh, again, Abtelung 502 kind of lived up to the marketing and did seem to dry significantly faster than a lot of other oil washes I've used in the past. Once I let it set up a bit, I went back in and got ready to do some of the fun lighting stuff. I went in with the airbrush and this time did use Liquitex ink uh, because it is just a little bit runnier than the Pro Acryl Transparent White, which in this case was going to be a good thing for me because I needed very precise control. I highlighted the coils of his, I think that's a Volkite gun, uh, as well as in and around the eye sockets of his helmet. Now, I decided I wanted to have a little fun uh, with the OSL on this guy. I've used the traditional blue before and a little bit of green. My Black Templars use a lot of red and fiery effects. So this time, I decided to try some purple. And this is the only application where I did end up thinning down the Monument Hobbies transparent purple because it is a deep, rich purple. For a lot of applications, that's great, but I need it thin. So I put a little bit of thinner in, put it in the airbrush, and started carefully applying it. And the effect was pretty good. Purple lies roughly across from yellow on the color wheel, so the little bright pop of color there should help offset the yellow even a little bit further. Then I got out another new toy, and that was the AK Interactive Neon Series Fluorescent Magenta. I went and touched some of the insides of the plasma coils with this, as well as a little bit of dots near the inside of his eye lenses. Then I let him set up and dry, and he was done. Looking back on this guy, I'm pretty happy with how he came out. Uh, like I said, I did miss a couple of spots with the red undercoat, but honestly, they're in spots you can't really see all that much. And in reality, he came out looking pretty good and not nearly as garish as I was afraid of at the at first. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I would probably do things pretty similarly. I might even lean more toward a magenta than a dark red to start with to really warm that up. Uh, one of the things about the CMYK color wheel, which is the one that we actually use as painters, is when you mix yellow and magenta, you get red. So a gradient of magenta should lead something closer to orange, uh, as opposed to what I got here, which was kind of a, almost like a burnt sienna type color on the underside. So next time I'll probably do that a little bit different, but as you can see here in the pictures, and I might even put the 360 video in here, he came out pretty good, definitely worthy of the tabletop. So like I said, uh, that Lieutenant came from issue one of Imperium Magazine. Now, Philip, you might be saying, if you have also subscribed to Imperium Magazine, isn't there a Necron Royal Warden in there too? And the answer to that is yes, and he is actually sitting right behind me right now. He will be coming in a video soon, and I'm thinking I might use him to illustrate that you probably don't need as many metallic paints in your life as you think. If you're interested in seeing that, it should be coming out in the next week or two. And in the meantime, if you've got something you'd like to see me try on one of these, again, leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it's just paint, and thanks for watching.